It's so, the other guy. It's Bobby. It's that guy. That it's hangs that out guy. With hey, you know, it's amazing what some people can create with a little know-how. There's a man from Minneapolis who has crafted quite a reputation for himself as a master woodworker, and all his materials are literally picked out of the trash. It's a story you may have seen on Minnesota Bound. His Bill Shirk. A couple more boards there. Curiosity drives Jesse Gerhardt to the back alleys of the big city. I know where three spots are to go. Where this outdoorsman loves to hunt. I'm gonna steal those ones right there for sure. That's like an old, like door or something. I do like these little pieces. These are solid wood. I wanted to tell a story about what people thought of as trash, that someone with some skill could make it new again. Jesse makes the rounds behind businesses he has permission to snoop. I thought this was a thick, thick piece. You can take and cut it into a lot of strips. Big discovery. Score. Sounds like this. Score, score, score. <laughs> but a picker's pleasure. This feels like oak. I can't tell. Also creates pain. Oh, am I going to be able to lift this? Around railroad tracks and in industrial parts of the city. There, there's just a lot of lumber everywhere. You can end up fr framing like a whole house out of all the wood you can find, you know? This is a story all about habitual hoarding and its positive effects. I got this strap off of a truck holding MREs on it when I was in the invasion of Iraq. See, Jesse survived three tours of duty as a Marine Corps machine gunner came home after war to try and find clarity and maybe a new direction. To be able to pursue something that was not uh, really difficult on my body uh, because I, I, I can't move around as good as I used to be able to. Jesse built on his lifelong hobby and earned two degrees in woodworking. By the time I was done with college, I had enough tools to make a living. So we set up shop, literally, in an old Northeast workshop. It is here his story finally took shape. I find wood wherever I can get it and make stuff out of it. Mostly people's fences and wood flooring, people's dresser drawers. Yeah, so it's all recycled wood. A business that started with a single canoe. 90% of this is all church pew. The deck here is a cedar fence uh, from Robinsdale. This is that James J. Hill lumber in Delwood. It's that part of that gym floor. And then the waste from the canoes I make into the paddles. The waste from the paddles a lot of times I make into the fishing nets. The waste from that I make into fishing lures. So these are all little cutoff pieces from when I make a Canoe paddle. Jesse's form of recycling, a practice well perfected. Just look around. Turns out this passion whittled its way out of Jesse's family tree. Yeah, it was from my grandfather back before it wasn't even the boundary waters. Jesse's grandpa, an outdoorsman larger than life, the mentor who taught Jesse to love life outside. Jesse quickly became a chip off the old block. Some of the stuff I make is, if my grandfather were to see it, that he would be excited. Everyone is. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Jesse's show booths never stay empty long. And they're all from someone's fence that fell over in Robbinsdale. I keep saying someone's, it was actually my fence that fell over. <laughs> this was the first prototype, and definitely my favorite type of paddle to paddle with. Who knew one man's treasure could come from so much trash? Show people that 
somebody with some skill could take what all other people thought was trash and make it into something that was good enough to even pass down to their children. A strange thing to think about that it was in the dumpster and then I made something out of it and people hang it up as a piece of art. That is so cool. But you know, I was a shop teacher at one time in I my previous that. life. That's so cool what he does. Yeah. The lathe, the band saws. Man, I'd love to have it's a incredible. shop again. Yeah.